Hi, welcome to the second video uh, where I'm going to work on my extruder. Uh, here it is, some small updates from my last video. I said the nozzle in my last video was a bit too thick, so it didn't really fit on uh, well. So I uh, adjusted it to size. It still doesn't fit perfectly, I still had some uh, distance between them. But on the lathe I didn't want to go any closer and wasn't able to clamp it in very well. In my last video I didn't use a hopper. We can just place it on the here. You should wear safety goggles for this, I guess, but yeah. So now the plastic can go in and we can run it. So the new nozzle needs to be placed and then we can start at the electronics part. Before I'm going to show you my electronics, a small warning, it's not a bomb. It's my attempt of electronics a few years ago. So, um, here it is. This is my uh, electronic box, which sort of controls the entire extruder. As you can see, it's very um, aesthetic, very beautiful, and not made by a crazy person. For the controls, it's very easy. I have this key ignition system, which just uh, allows the current to flow through the system. So you start it with turning the key. Uh, if you want to start the motor, you flip this switch. You switch this one for the heater. So I need to label them still, or it's just, uh, I know which one they are, and I'm the only one who's using it, so I didn't really do it until this point. And here's a button to control the speed of the motor. So inside I have a 12 volt power supply, the motor controller. This is a off the shelf controller part, especially for 12 volt motors. Uh, so for windshield wiper motors, this is a perfect controller. Uh, the only downside is of course you have this, this pot uh, meter um, which you use to sort of set the speed. Ideally uh, electrical would be better. And here is the temperature control system. So this is a PID controller which sort of controls temperature at the point where I want, to, want it to be. Yeah, so for the plastic we're going to use here, I think ABS needs 220 Celsius. So these are the electronics. Um, I can like disattach everything and show you how everything is connected, but I can also show you the schematics on the screen. We only have to do is connect the motor, uh, the heaters, and the thermocouple for this. And the thermocouple is the easiest because it's just already attached inside this. Here's a tiny hole and this is where the thermocouple goes. So you measure the temperature just between uh, the plates at this, in this area. It's not ideal, you really want to have the temperature um, where the bore is and where the molten plastic is, but Unfortunately, I didn't really trust it to uh, bore as deep because I was afraid that the plastic would leak out and it would get this leakage and stuff. So you just plug it in. The cables are quite a bit short, so I will try to do this correctly. Yes. And then we can attach the heaters, which are these two cables. How do I know these cables are for the heater? It's just because I know. There we go. And loosen this one up a bit. Past me is laughing right now. Like, ah, I could easily attach it because I just read the data sheets and designed it and remembered everything. So um, the heaters will be connected with the PID controller. This one will turn on and off the heaters and control the temperature that way. It switches between zero and uh, 220 volts, just what's coming outside of the sockets. So let me now connect the motor part so we can control that. This one. And when these two are connected, we can test it. So I'm now going to connect this here. This is the moment of truth. See if it still works. Uh, turning around the key and... Yay! As you can see, um, 
turning the key worked. This is the motor control here. So I, uh, if I now switch it on, it should start. And now, as you can see, it rotates. And for the heating part, yeah, touch the heating elements, very smart. But yeah, so this is the very, very interesting part of the video where we're heating up all this metal with just two small electric heaters. It's more than enough to melt the plastic during operations, but it takes some time to sort of heat the whole thing up. Last time it was around one and a half hours. So uh, yeah, my cameraman is now smiling and thinking, oh God, I still have to be here for more than an hour. Don't leave me cameraman, don't leave me. So as you can see, the temperature controller is now slowly increasing and now we wait until it's 220 degrees. Ooh. Through the magic of editing, we are now only at 41 degrees. And this is of course, because this is radiating more heat than it's going into the metal. So for this reason, I have this beautiful horror eye patch, which is made of uh, glass wool. Yeah, I mean, I can sort of paste it here and, and use this part and turn it around. Uh, as you can see, I'm a big fan of duct tape and I've already duct taped it once. So yeah, it's very important to not have the plastic cables run over the heaters. It's very important. Ah, <clears throat> or to, to touch the electrical parts like I just did. That hurt. Um, so this is a good moment to warn people. I'm using like uh, 220 volts. This is very dangerous and you should not work with these types of electronics if you don't know what you're doing. Um, should I be allowed to work with them? Ah. Uh, let me go on. And there it goes, all tucked in nice, neat and warm. Uh, let me first get the tape, which is just awkwardly just outside of the table. Uh, I don't know what's the difference between black tape and gray tape, uh, but it's great tape. If you sell tape and you want to sponsor these videos, well, wh why would you? I mean. <laughs> and... And then <laughs> this. <laughs> Oh, it really looks terrible. So, as you can see here, I made a small hole and here's the nozzle. And when everything is heated up, the plastic will come out. And, well, if you put plastic in it. There are some design considerations I'm thinking about to make it a bit better, but in general, it works. And now uh, we go back to the magic of editing and we will see if it reaches the temperature, we are set it on. Ooh. We are now getting very close to the 200 degrees Celsius, of course. So that sort of shows that it's quite capable of heating up. I don't see any smoke. I do smell a bit of the residue plastic, which is still inside. Uh, but yeah, that doesn't really matter. So we're really getting somewhere. I guess. I don't see the temperature here, but it should be close to 200 degrees, which is great because then ABS starts to, to melt and stuff. In the next episode, we're going to uh, melt it, pull it out. I will design a puller. It will be great. And please like and subscribe. Uh, hit the notification button. Give me a comment about my Frankensteinish machine. And I will see you in the next video.